you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover how a couple of months, but it's this, 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 enough for you to know what's up in the hood. Many people do not understand what the term feminism means. So we ask you, what is feminism? Feminism is a term to define a group of women who fight for equal rights. Um, I think that the terminology has changed throughout the years. I think that women in today's generation thinks that if they act like a man, that they are equal to a man. And um, I don't believe in everything that feminists of today believe in. The belief in like a strong female power, um, I don't necessarily feel that it's like women are better than men or we're being subjected to male influences or anything like that. It's just a powerful, strong woman. Feminism is believing that men and women are equal. And some people believe that if you are feminist, you, meet, you think uh, women should be above men, but actually feminism means that both men and women have the same opportunities. Respecting women uh, in general, uh, whether it's their rights, whether it's um, the way you talk to them, doesn't really uh, matter. It's just the way you, you present yourself to a woman, the way you act around a woman, the way you treat a woman. Feminism is a kind of movement that women have. Feminism is just the support of uh, women and getting rid of the patriarchal system and like supporting equality for all genders. According to dictionary.com, feminism is the doctrine advocating social, political, and all other rights of women equal to those of men. Although the term feminism has been used since the 17th century, Women figures have been around since the women's right movement. Feminists are people who would like to see equal representation, whether it's in government or on the media. L, G, T, B community are all feminism. Beyonce claims that she's a feminist. Maya Angelou, the poet, she's a feminist in my opinion. I support feminism. I wouldn't consider myself an, an advocate. <laughs> absolutely. I, uh, absolutely. I am a feminist. Yes and no. I am a feminist, yes. Some people think just because they're a female, they're feminists. No. I, I don't believe that it's bad to identify someone as a feminist. I believe it should be encouraged. Everybody should fight for the rights that are important to them. No, I do not think it's bad to identify yourself as feminist because... I think it is great to identify myself as a feminist because not enough men believe that it is okay for them to be a feminist. Do we think it's bad that males identify themselves as superheroes? Hey, I don't think this bad. The problems of feminism affects me um, because I have to think about if I will get equal pay in a working situation um, to my male co-workers. Yes, problems of feminists affect me because one day I'm gonna have a career that another male have and I'm gonna want the same pay as him. But eventually, just because life works, I won't get that. The problems of feminists partially affect me. It frustrates me when I have to try to get the people that, you know, to realize what a feminist is. Feminism as a movement has been around for a relatively short amount of time in the scope of human history. Though one could argue feminists existed since ancient Egypt with Hatshepsut, foot, the first woman to rule a country, Joan of Arc as well is known for being persecuted for being strong-willed in a patriarchal society. Those two and many others stories have gone to inspire women to become outspoken for equality between the sexes. One of whom is famously known as Frida Kahlo. Now she influenced others in her work as a painter. 
She was known for her self-portraits where her appearance went against gender norms of her culture. The most apparent characteristics were facial hair upon her top brow and lip. Nowadays, the word feminism has been stigmatized just as the people it is applied to as a bunch of strong-willed women with bad attitude. I believe that uh, as young as five, six, seven years old, even younger, uh, both young ladies and young men could be taught these things and should be taught these things. Uh, once you get to high school, once you get to college, it's already too late. I believe that the messages of society have already sunk in. That's why early intervention and teaching young people about feminism and about equality is very, very important. You should keep it because uh, should should um, know more about it because it's going to help them get through how, uh, life, basically. I think the youth is very aware of these fundamental issues. Um, they have access to social media and they could get a sense of what's happening in our world through social media. How often do I hear about feminist organizations or events? Um, I feel like I, like scrolling through Facebook and things like that, I, I see it pretty regularly. I don't pay too much attention to them, but um, I think that there's a pretty strong feminist movement in our society today. Um, yes, not so much anymore. Uh, my uh, ex was very involved in that, but we've since parted ways, so I'm not hearing about it so much anymore on my own. Actually, I don't know any feminist organizations or events I don't hear about feminist organizations or events very often. Um, well, I hear about feminist organizations and events almost every day. I follow uh, several feminist activists on uh, social media, and uh, I like to be in the know about what's happening with different organizations, different political campaigns, and I try to to always teach my students about that and let them know what's going on in the world because it affects all of us. In the nation, there are many organizations trying to spread the word of feminism, such as an organization called He for She, which explains gender equality. In Chicago, there is a national organization for women called Chicago Now. If there are many organizations in the world, why not help spread feminism even more? Be proud to label yourself as a feminist and take a stand. Hi, this is Joseph Lopez and Haley Hawkins at CTVN Hardcover News. The legalization of same-sex marriage has finally been passed all over the U.S. The first state to legalize same-sex marriage was Maryland in 2004, which led to acceptance of same-sex marriage throughout the entire country. Eventually, on June 26, 2015, the Supreme Court passed the Orville v. Hodges decision. Now we have reporters on the streets getting people's opinions on how the legalization of same-sex marriage could potentially change the definition of the traditional American family. I feel like it was overdue and it's a great thing and Canada, Canada did it 10 years ago. Other people want to be gay, then that's their business. I feel that we're in America, we have our rights and that they should, like, they should have done that a long time ago. That we have our freedom, that it's their choice. So I'm glad that they did legalize it. Like I have a friend and he's, he wears like fur coats and all this stuff. People are very quick. But I think it takes a lot of courage to be who you are and that's all he's doing. I do have friends and I do have family members that are gay and, and lesbians. And I do respect them. You don't say based on the fact that they're human beings. Well, I have a few family members that are like either gay or bi or lesbian. And me and my family, we're open and we're supportive about that and we support them in their, uh, whatever they want to do with their life. If you're a real family, you will love and respect each other. 
I feel that it's, it, it really doesn't change the family values. Like I feel like the kids would still grow up the same if they adopt or whatever. It's just that I feel that the only difference that it is is with other families, how they look at them. I hope that it can be whatever people want it to be, as long as they're happy and kids are happy. In the future, more recent, in the next few years, the families are going to become more diverse, either with more lesbian, gay uh, couples, interracial couples. Act has passed its time for the changes to continue for both the world and society's general value system. This has been CTVN News. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Welcome to Hardcover News. Today we'll be discussing the progress of the LGBT community and the discrimination within it. I'm Ariana. And I'm Caleb. And, and we bring you Life in, in the, the LGBT, LGBT Community. community. What does it mean to me? I mean, that's just who I am. Um, I mean, if you're labeling it bisexual since I was a very young age, I think I figured it out. The first person I was ever attracted to was a girl. And I didn't understand like what any of that meant necessarily. It, um, but it was, it was very prevalent and it was something that was just there and I knew it was there. And I am an incredibly headstrong person so I just refused to ever be weird about it. It was just who I was. Being an ally means to me um, standing up for other people even though they might identify as something different than me. What it means to me is, is letting people accept who they is and um, it's like be proud of who you are. Some strides definitely in the right direction as far as um, the countercultural groups all com coming together and blanketing themselves under, un under one sign like LGBTQ community. It's come really far in the past 20 years because um, almost recently gay people were allowed to be married and stuff like that and that would, didn't happen like almost 10 years ago and that was pretty much shunned upon. Well it's been a lot. It's gone real far during the past um, years. I've been noticing it. Um, oh, over the years I've been alive. Because over the time, it's got, uh, it increased it, and it's like a lot of people coming out, uh, a lot of people are um, fighting on what they believe in, what is right, to they want to, uh, to like, on making people accept who they is. I mean, there's, there's just a lot of progress that still has to be made. It's come a long way. It's not as divided the click in the 90s, I remember, Lesbian groups being their group, bisexual groups being their group, gay, mainly gay white men having their group. And I don't feel like it's as greatly as divided as it once was, but there's still a lot of progress to be done. Um, I do think we still have more work to do because people are still, like, there's still discrimination upon the LGBT community because, like, people put their own beliefs before the feelings of others. The only thing I think we should do is like, just like, um, just follow your own way. If you don't agree with it, do you do your thing. If you don't, if you do agree with it, do you do your thing. And um, and it's like, just, just follow your own path on what you believe in this or not. Now, despite the remarkable progress that on gaining the rights and respect the LGBT community deserves, there is still some discrimination outside of the community and surprisingly, even within it. Especially discrimination towards those who identify as non-binary gender spectrum. Wait, what is a non-binary gender spectrum? I'm glad you asked, Mariana. Gender is what you identify as, as in your mind, what you feel you are, while sex is your biological sex or the person you were born with. 
These parts can either be the same or different from your gender. If they are the same, you are known as cisgender, or where both your identity and your biological sex are the same. On the other hand, if they are opposite from each other, you are known as transgender, or where you are have body parts of a male, but you identify as a female, or you have body parts of a female, but you identify as a male. Now there is a lot of genders in between the traditional male and female genders. For example, a demigirl is someone who partially identifies as a woman, but not wholly. Another example of a non-binary gender or a gender that is outside of the traditional male and female genders and known as genderless or genderqueer. Well, now that makes more sense. And you know, I've heard a lot about people who have identified as genderqueer or bigender and are accused of saying that their identity isn't real, that they have to be one or the other. You're right. That is true. Although, it's important not to confuse gender identity with sexual orientation because even bisexuals face a similar situation they, that they have to pick on one or the other and they have and they are merely curious, but that's a different topic altogether. Discrimination on social media and on the news, on people talking about uh, a certain person because they claim who they who they is. They probably saying it's not right, or some people are saying it is right and whatever. They putting religious and anything like that. Like it's a part. It's uh, certain. It's, it's like uh, there's reasons for discrimination like that. So I've seen it so far. I haven't, but I know people who have, and like in school and stuff. And when you're bisexual, yeah, I've lost friends over it. I've had family members who don't want me around their children. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention before when you asked me that though is like, it, there's a level that happens interacting. Especially like I find when I interact with homose or uh, heterosexual men, where yeah, like a bit, it becomes like this like topic of conversation that doesn't necessarily need to be talked about as much as they want to because then you're a fantasy. Well, yeah, I'm aware of it because like uh, I've been around people who've been like that, and I've been seeing on social media. And a lot of people, and really religious people, who uh, who really do things like that. Um. Yes. Recently, I learned about that. Discrimination in and of itself will always happen anytime anybody steps outside of the lines that we're supposed to cut that society tells us that we're supposed to color in. That's always going to be the fact of the matter. Um, as far as what can happen to make it so that that doesn't happen any longer within this community, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it, people's open-mindedness in general in the world just has to change. People have to start recognizing people as one race and not color, sexual orientation, what, how you identify in the world that you live in. Like, that's not, that's not the point. It's the character and quality of the human being, not those things. My, my advice on what I got to say on them is like, if you don't agree with anything like that, you should just like follow your own path. If you don't, you got like, you should think like it should have nothing to do with you and whatever you think and just like, like keep your mind to yourself. Like don't, like don't put yourself into that situation or let's like, cause more problems for everybody. I believe that just because you don't understand or you don't know about a certain thing doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I believe you should put yourself in their shoes because if someone feels something, it's true. It's their feelings and regardless of how you feel about it, you should put yourself in their shoes and yeah. Um, well, I mean, that, uh, yeah, open, open your mind. Like, that's not your decision. That's not your life to lead. Like, people like to sit around and judge everybody because it makes them feel better. I mean, I think 
Baldwin said it best. It's like, it, if people have to set, if people, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, and basically it's like if people are scared and racism and homophobia and all of these other phobias exist because if you have to get over it and you actually have to look at the human race and the things that we've done to one another, all you're left to deal with is pain. People are scared of that. People don't want to deal with that. So it's way easier to judge somebody and make them feel bad because it makes you feel good. It's just simpler. It's easier to wrap your head around sitting down and trying to figure out like why somebody says this or why somebody does that is a hard thing to do. And especially if you don't agree with it. If for whatever reason, if it's for religious reasons or your own personal beliefs, opening your mind up to other people and listening, that's a hard thing to do. But that's what has to happen. That's what I would say. Stop putting your finger on it. Like stop trying to label it. Thank you, Chicago, for taking this time to watch this program. And please consider others' feelings when it comes to their gender identity, even if they're non-binary. We're all still people. I'm Caleb. And I'm Mariana. And, and this, this was Hardcover News. News. Welcome to Hardcover News. My name is Janelle. And I'm Axel. Today's news report is about minorities uniting against police brutality. Many of you guys have heard of the Black Lives Matter movement, but some have been questioning that all lives matter. However, throughout the years, African American people have been discriminated and recently many cases have been made about the deaths of black people. Recently, 32-year-old Philando Castile was shot and killed by a cop when he was trying to take out his license just like he was asked. And with this family witnessing his murder, black lives are taken for granted and overlooked. How can all lives matter if there is still the killing of unarmed black people? Many minorities ask questions about their own race, questioning how the media only focuses on one race and Hispanics dying from police brutality in 2016. Throughout the years with many civil rights movements, minorities have come together with African Americans to fight for the injustices of our lives. Now let's go to Adam to see what the public thinks about this. We're on the 606 trail, and we're here to interview people. My name is Nasut Musa Kafraye. I'm a student teacher at a master teacher, partner Bab Yanun, AKA Dr. Malika Z. York. Yes. Because I'm a part of one. Uh, I'm a Nuwapian, Wunuwupu. Um, I know of identity groups that work toward ending like that type of systemic oppression. Um, I don't know of organizations that mix the two, but they stand in solidarity. Um, actually, at my school, there is there's actually a group called Five Plus One, which brings uh, Latinos together to fight um, off immigration or anybody like police going through. Um, police knocking on doors and saying, oh, you can't, you can't be here. Because we're not minorities, and as long as we let white people tell us we're minorities, we're going to continue to be killed because it is based on a media that we have no control over. We've never had control over the media in this country. We have to remember that America is a racist society that's built off the eradication and the enslavement of people of color. So we can never be surprised <laughs> when the media is in their favor. We gotta wake up to that. Because they really don't focus on us, basically. I think it would make a change because uh, Latinos and African Americans are a big community, especially around here. And if we come together as one, it'll, we'll, we'll probably make a change. I think solidarity is really important. I think solidarity 
is definitely going to help us move forward. The power of one voice is so much, and the power of many, many voices is going to be even greater. And so two different groups, two oppressed groups come together in solidarity with one another's struggles. Uh, unarming the police, demilitarizing them. They, they, they move like military. They don't move like police. Black people are not, nor will we ever be considered United States citizens. We have to remember that. We are considered three-fifths of a human being chattel property. Native Americans are also qualified, classified, and identified as Negro colored and black, which is why they, the race tension between blacks and Latinos is actually frivolous because we the same people. Even Columbus recorded that in his log in 1654 when he first touched the shores of North America. So that's a historically documented fact. I would hope to see changes because the uh, police, um, police and the, also the community are just turning on each other and it's making everything worse on us and them because they don't really help us out and we don't want their help because we're too ignorant to accept it. If the public consistently demonizes people of color, like the darker your skin is, the more they're going to villainize you. Now that we got people's opinion, let's move on to Jocelyn. Thank you, Adam. There have been many deaths of minorities with 230 blacks and Hispanics, people dying due to police brutality. Through a study in Harvard University, police are 50% more likely to use force on Hispanics and blacks than white. We all need to question why that's happening, whether it's due to stereotypes or racial profiling. It needs to come to an end. Welcome back to the studio. What we have gathered about people's responses in Jocelyn's and statistics is that instead of making separate movements for Hispanics and African Americans, we need to come together and help our neighbor. I totally agree with you, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, we can all change the world together. We'll see you next time in Hardcover News.